Coming up next, Francis and Friends. Francis and Friends is a production of the Sun Life Broadcasting Network. Email questions and comments for today's program to onair at jsm.org. Podcasts of previous programs can be listened to on our website at francisandfriends.com. In Hour 2, we welcome your phone calls regarding today's topic. Well, praise the Lord and welcome today to Francis and Friends. We're so thrilled to be with you today. I'm excited about our program today and I'm anxious to get into our subject uh, with Mike Muserall today that's our special guest. And Mike, it's good to have you. Oh, it's great to be here. And if I can, I'd like to say sure. thank you to uh, Pastor Norman Myra Lipinski. I was in Chicago with Sister Swagger and there were so many people that came up and talked about this program. They love you. They love what the ministry is doing. And there was a, a, a lady I was talking to that had been a heroin addict for 35 years, if you imagine that. And uh, this is talking about the power of the cross. It's talking about the power Praise of Christ. Praise God, yes. They accepted Christ, was set free, has been set free, free now for 17 years. We had some great services there, and I want to just, just thank them. But also, I'm going to be this weekend, starting Friday night, tomorrow night, I'm going to be at Macedonia Ministries, a praise and worship center with uh, Pastor Elder Enoch Easter. And I'm going to be there uh, for tonight. I mean, tomorrow night I'm going to do a PowerPoint on world religion and cults. And it's going to be a shortened version. We're not going to do like six hours or anything like that, uh, beginning at 7 p.m. The next night, Saturday, I'm going to do a PowerPoint on effective youth ministry. And uh, that begins at 5 p.m. Uh, the Sunday morning, I'm going to do a Sunday school teaching on the Bible translations. Then I'm going to go into a PowerPoint sermon on the message of the cross. And I did this message across uh, both in Crosby, Texas, but also in, in uh, Chicago. And uh, it really helped a lot of people to understand the sin nature and understand what Paul is trying to get across. And uh, we'll be meeting at uh, uh, 1326 Country Club Drive in Jackson, Mississippi. That's 1326. 26 Country Club Drive, Jackson, Mississippi. And for more information, you can uh, get in touch with uh, Brother Robert Amos at 769-251-3086. So if you're in the Jackson, Mississippi area, come and join us, please. Well, praise the Lord, Mike. And I encourage all of our listeners, if you could go uh, live in around that area, go and be with Mike. You will be blessed. I can assure you that. Jim Nations, welcome to the program today. Thank you. Today. Good morning. And I'll be in Belleville, Michigan. Okay. This weekend? No, it's, it's, in, it's next month. It's May the 11th, 12th, and 13th. We'll be at Me a Message of the Cross Church. And everyone in that area, if you live in, the, in that area, the uh, Belleville, uh, Michigan, and surrounding areas, pray for us that God will move. They need a move there, yes. from what I'm understanding. And we want to be that we're going to be ministering uh, a uh, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night. That'll be May, May the 11th, 12th, and 13th. Uh, uh, Friday and Saturday night will be 7 p.m. Sunday morning, 10.30 a.m. Uh, and 6.30 p.m. If you need to call, and he, told, he, he sent me an email and said he had had some people to call since we had made the announcement. <clears throat> it's 313-584-0642. Uh, and just pray for us and, and be there. Then come out and be with us. We're going to have. We're going to be preaching the cross and Praise preaching the, the gospel and sh and sharing things with people and maybe answer some questions that people have. I like to do that anyway. Yeah. The same thing we do here. So that's exactly that's right. right. Yeah, yes. that's good. Okay, we're going to go right into our teaching, and you may want to record these sessions. Uh, concerning Islam, and Mike is going, we're by no means will we be able to cover everything. And so, Brother Mother Maserol, we're just going to try to give you exactly what is Islam? Who founded it? What type of man was it that founded Islam? And kind of then bring it down to where today, to where the religion is. So you may want to tape or these or DVD them, whatever you want. But if you have friends and neighbors that are, have a misunderstanding or really doesn't understand the religion of Islam, we're not just trying to hurt some religion. We're just trying to give you the belief system of every one of the world's religions. And Mike, I'm going to turn it to you now. All right. Let me start off by saying this, that not all Muslims believe the same. And just like in every religion that we've done already, there are some within that religion that really don't know what, they, what the whole religion right. teaches. Uh, they come in and they accept certain aspects of it. 
uh, for example, the five pillars of Islam, they may follow that, but they may not have a deep understanding of the teachings of the Quran or the teachings of Muhammad, their prophet. Uh, so when we talk about this, I don't want anybody to just jump to conclusion that anybody that looks like they're from the Middle East is, is going to be a terrorist. We're not trying to come, come across that way. It's not our desire in any way, shape, or form to, to have you form opinions against people beside you. We will, however, present the teachings, the foundational teachings of Islam. Now, one of the things we did also with Mormonism is we showed you the, the absolute teachings of Joseph Smith, Jr. And, and they have changed over the years, but if you look at his original teachings, you see aspects of uh, polygamy, you see aspects of racial uh, 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 hatred toward African Americans. Well, after he called them Negroes back then. Uh, you'll see uh, different aspects of, of polygamy, almost pedophilia within, within yeah. and that's some of the <coughs> situations that Utah still deals with. With Islam, we're going to show you what true Islam is. That's good, yes. Now, those who say that we are not radical Muslims, now you've got to understand, Sister Swagger, that when the time comes in a nation where they force themselves, then even those that are moderate or those that would be liberal, if you can say there's such a thing as, well, I guess there are liberal Muslims, that they'll be forced to make a decision. And that decision will have to be to enforce 100 percent right. the jihad that has been brought forth. And if they don't, they that, were killed? That's right. And they're considered the same as an infidel. Yeah. All right. So let's go to what is Islam. Now, we're t again, it's my custom. I try to go to their literature to explain it. So sometimes I, I may have, you'll see, for example, it's, it's got one in unique and God and capitalized. I would not do this in reference to any God that is not the true God. However, this is their literature. That's why it's in quotation marks. Muslims believe in one unique, incomparable God, in the angels created by him, in the prophets through whom his revelations were brought to mankind, in the day of judgment, and in individual accountability for actions in God's complete authority over human destiny and in the life after death. And this is from IslamCity.com. Uh, Islam is both a religion and a complete way of life. And let me stop there for a second. You cannot separate the religion from the government system that they have set forth. The government system is meant to tie to the religion as true Judaism was always meant to be. Judaism was supposed to have been a theocracy. Judaism always, was, their, their, their secular laws were supposed to be bound to the scriptures. And, and that, that always is the ideal if you can do it. So in this situation, their way of life and their religion is the same. That's why their laws have to tie up to the, the Quran and the Hadiths. All right. Muslims follow a religion of peace. Now this is their literature. This isn't ours. Muslims, Muslims follow a, a religion of peace, mercy, and forgiveness, and the majority have nothing to do with the extreme grave events which have come to associate with their faith. Now, are they a religion of peace? We know after 9-11 that, that, that Bush right away went into this mode of trying to uh, give us the impression that Muslims were, uh, were, for the most part, a peaceful people here it's, in America. But it's been hijacked. By yeah. some radical few, individuals. That's the story right, that's been right, painted. Right, and and uh, we saw we saw especially at that point. Prior to that point, we saw an increase of it, but at that point on, we saw toleration for the nation. In other words, everybody in this nation needs to be tolerant of all different belief mm -hmm. systems and all religions. Now, I'm not I'm not all, at all advocating that we go out and we persecute the Muslims. But at the same time, they shouldn't be persecuting us. That's Amen? right. That's right. I mean, uh, uh, we have lost so many rights since 9-11. Christians have lost so many rights. And, and there are things that, you know, we were talking before the, we came on the air about certain things that have just been passed by, by Congress that, again, are taking away more rights at a time that, that we need to stand up for and, our rights. And we're losing them at a rapid rate. That's what's frightening. It, it is. It very, and, very much but so. But their prominence is increasing and Christianity is decreasing. Right. In yes. fact, there's unfairness in the world system today toward the religion. And, and that's putting it very mildly. Especially that, the Christian. Yes. yes. And it's not a religion. We refer to it as that, but it's not a religion. But Christianity is under attack. Yes, right. exactly. Right. And, you know, for example, if, if they can come into our area and hand out literature on Islam on the streets. We now, can. can we go to, to a, a Muslim country and do that? No. no. 
You can't can, even go to their neighborhood. That's right. One of the state. They the states. teach Islam in a lot of the schools today. That's right. If you remember, after 9/11, there were schools in in uh, California where the children had to come to school. This was a school project. They had to come in. The girls had to come in with the proper head covering. The whole thing, uh, the burqa, the whole the whole aspect. Uh, they had to do a study. We had a we had a student here in in. Uh, uh, I want to say Ascension Parish, that one of our school project was to was to make a license plate uh, about Islam and Christianity, and uh, I mean, just, she had to do a turn paper, and she finally went to the teacher, and, and her standing up for her Christian beliefs uh, at that point, uh, Katie was her name, uh, at that point of time, uh, the teacher said, "I think we've studied enough of this." Mm -hmm. And Good. so, but we couldn't do that in their countries. No, you we could couldn't not. do a mass mail out. That's you can right. do a mass mail out to, to their to their and schools, and you could not witness. But they to can't. Them. They did here exactly, exactly. All right, the uh, Arabic word Islam simply means submission and derives from a word meaning peace. You know. Now, let me I, I keep adding this, but I want to make sure that because I'm reading their information, I want to make sure that we have the proper context. The aspect of submission bringing forth peace only is if you want to be dominated. And so they have the jihad of the sword. It's usually jihad of the word first. Let me try to speak to you, try to come, come into control over you by word. Jihad of the hand. Let me try to do things in such a way that you want me to be in charge of you. And if that doesn't work, we'll do jihad of the sword. And so, yes, it will bring forth peace, but bring forth peace by becoming totally submitted. <coughs> excuse me. And to rise from word meaning peace in a religious context. <coughs> excuse me. I apologize. I have this cold and it's causing me a problem. It means complete submission to the will of God. Allah is the Arabic name of God, which is used by Arab, Muslims, and Christians alike. It's not, it's not the Christian God. And we've got to make that, con that, that distinction. About three or four years ago, there was a, a Catholic bishop in uh, uh, the New England area that had suggested that we stop ta talking about God, the Christian God, as God, and call him Allah. So we would be able to minister and open the door more easily to the Muslims. And you've got to make a distinction. Allah is not God. No, absolutely. This is not a situation we have a different name for the same God. The Muslim God is not the Christian God. And we can never, ever let anybody get away with making that comment. We've got to correct them when, the, when they say that. Muhammad received his first revelation in the year about 610 uh, Anno Domini. And uh, most of the time it's it's written in the in the... Uh, uh, the current era. Current era is what they're using now to try to get away from, yeah. from the fact that this is a year of our Lord. Muhammad, Muhammad also spelled the other Muhammad uh, was of the tribe of Koresh in Mecca and that was supposed to be the most honorable of the tribes. He claimed to have a revelation that God, Allah, was one opposed to the Trinity. That Muhammad was his messenger of truth. Every day a Muslim makes that declaration that God is one and not a Trinity. Just as the Jews in the, in the Shema also make that, that revelation of God is one. Not understanding that the scripture has always been that God is one, but a, a unity of one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Shia and Sunni are the two largest uh, divisions within Islam. Muslims eventually got divided into two groups, Shia and Sunni, right after the death of the Prophet Muhammad. Shi'i Muslims wanted somebody from Muhammad's family that should take the mantle of Muhammad, whereas the Sunni Muslims wanted the first caliph to be their mentor. Now, this is, again, this is a, a Muslim website. This is an Islamic website. And uh, the, the, the thing is this, that Muhammad, going contrary to the teachings that he had brought forth, did not prepare for his successor. And so he did not prepare for his death. Uh, and so when he died, there was the struggle as to who would take over. And, and that's why we have the distinction here. The Shi'i, Ali, the, uh, Muhammad's son-in-law, was made the leaders of the Shi'i group, who is called as Imam. And that's from, uh, again, an Islamic group. The Quran, the Quran is the literal word of God. Now this is their revelation, this is their statement, which he revealed to his prophet Muhammad through the angel Gabriel. It was memorized by Muhammad, who then dictated to his companions. Why it was memorized is because Muhammad at this point in time could not write. Mm -hmm. And so instead, instead he memorized it and then dictated it later on. They in turn memorized it, wrote it down and reviewed it with the prophet Muhammad. 
Moreover, the Prophet Muhammad reviewed the Quran with the angel Gabriel once each year and twice in the last year of his life. Now, again, we're, if you see the size of a Quran, it's about the size of a Bible. Now, how is it possible for Muhammad to remember every aspect of that, to be able to review with the angel? So again, this, 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 this is an impossibility. Uh, nobody could, could, that I know of that, that can't read or write has the ability to memorize a whole book like that. This is from their website, MuslimPopulation.com, and we see in the dark areas, the areas of, of uh, the population, that'd be 90 to uh, 100%, and there's no way that there's 100% population. You've got, for example, you've got Israel here. Well, Israel, I think they're showing like 60 to 70%, if I'm not mistaken. But at first I thought, it, I, I just noticed now that the color was a little bit lighter. Uh, but the, the, the most of the concentration of Muslims is in the Middle East, and, and that makes sense. Uh, they're showing very little concentration in England. That surprises me. And also France, which has a, has a very high percentage of Muslims. But this is, this is where, where they're at, uh, population-wise. The list below shows a number of facilities used by Muslims for religious activities and community affairs in United States. Mosque and Islamic centers, 843. You've got to understand that um, an Islamic center and a, and a mosque is an area where it's not just used for worship. It is a, a place that's used for the training. And it could be used for the training of, of uh, people to stand up against Christianity and Jews, or it can be used, it depends on the Imam, it depends on, on who's teaching there as to how radical that could be. And that's why there are some, some concerns as to what's happening in America today. The Islamic schools, 165. Associations, 426. Publication centers, 89. There are 165 Islamic schools in the United States, of which 92 are full-time schools. So there's a lot of people. Now let's go into who Muhammad is. And, and there are some people who question even whether or Muhammad ever existed. Uh, you're not going to see any pictures. We're not going to show you any pictures of Muhammad because <coughs> there aren't any pictures available from the time when, when he was around. Muslims believe that Muhammad was a son of Abdullah. Now, Abdullah has within his name, and I don't know if it's middle name or whether it's part of this is a condense, has the word Allah there. Now, Muhammad is the one who received the revelation of Allah. Before that, Allah did not, was not spoken of in that sense. And yet his father has that name as, as part of his name. So that's kind of interesting. Yes, he was of the noblest tribe of the Koresh. He was born in Mecca. And Mecca, is, you see, is there spelled two ways. Well, he was one of many prophets, going all the way to back, back to Adam. And actually, I'm going to list them for you so you can have a look at them. Adam was the first prophet, followed by such prophets as Noah, Abraham, uh, Moses, and, and Jesus. Uh, Jesus is referred to as Isa, I-S-A, in the Quran. Muslims must also believe in the book of Allah, uh, books Allah sent to them, such as a Quran to the prophets, Muhammad and Injil. Injil is the is the Greek uh, is the Greek word is the uh, Arabic word for gospel. So the the Injil to Jesus would be the gospels given to Jesus. Here are some of our prophets, uh, some of their prophets, and some of ours are in there. You'll notice that Adam, Noah, Enoch, Eber, and Eber. If it's the same Eber, that is where we get the word Hebrew from. Mm -hmm. And then Salah, and then Abraham, Lot, Ishmael. And I don't, in our Bible, we don't have Lot as being a prophet or Ishmael as being a prophet. Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, uh, Shuaib, which is Jethro, uh, Moses' father-in-law. So we've got Moses, Aaron, David, Solomon, Elijah, Elisha. Jonah, Dul Kifl, which is Ezekiel, Zechariah, John the Baptist, and Isa, which is Jesus, and then Muhammad being the last. Now, Islam uses uh, the title of Messiah or Messiah for Isa, uh, Jesus for Jesus, but they do not teach that he is God incarnate. So their concept of the Messiah is different. And in reality, the Jewish concept of the Messiah is one where they don't believe that it's God incarnate also. The Quran mentions Jesus 25 times more often 
by name than Muhammad. So isn't that interesting? That uh, even in their book, he has more. Pro, uh, uh, yeah, it is very. Is mentioned more times than 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 Muhammad. Jesus is not good. Now this is from, is not God. This is from Quran, uh, four, uh, Surah one seventy one. O oh, people of the book, commit no excess in your religion. Now, when it talks about people of the book, that's referring to Christians and Jews. That is a phrase that they use. Commit no excess, excesses in your religion, nor say of God not but the truth. Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, and they'll often use the word Miriam, uh, was no more than an apostle of God and his word, which he bestowed on Mary, and a spirit proceeded from him. So believe in God and his messengers. Quran 4, 171. Regarding sonship of Jesus, that is Jesus, son of Mary, in word of truth concerning which they are doubting, it is not for God to take a son unto him. Glory be to him. When he decrees a thing, but he says to it, be, and it is. Quran 19, 34 and 35. So in other words, they're again reaffirming their teaching that Muhammad is a, pro is a major prophet and God had no son. They also teach that Jesus did not die. That they said in boast, we killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the apostle of Allah. But they killed him not, nor crucified him. But so it was made to appear to them. And those who differ therein are full of doubts, with no certain knowledge, but only conjecture to follow. For of a surety, they killed him not. Quran 4, 157. We've got to pause for a break, Mike, and... That's a good point to pick up when we come on yes, back on right point. after the break. Thank you for your prayers and financial support. Francis and Friends, we'll be right back on the Sun Life Broadcasting Network. Francis and Friends is a production of the Sun Life Broadcasting Network. Email questions for today's program to onair at jsm.org. You can also visit our website at francisandfriends.com. Right, we're back, and Mike, you were right in the middle of something right. when we had to break. One of the key foundations of Christianity is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Without the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have no redemption, we have no atonement, we have no justification. We are not saved because the penalty of sin had to be paid. So Islam attacks that, that the foundation of Christianity with this one surah. They said, I'll read it again, they said in boast, we killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the apostle of Allah, but they killed him not, nor crucify him. But so it was made to appear to them and to those who differ therein as full of doubts with no certain knowledge, but only conjecture to follow, for of surety they killed him not. Now, the teaching that Jesus did not die on the cross is not only limited to Islam. They were actually, during the... Uh, uh, after the apostolic age, the patristic period, and going into the apologetic area, era, there were those who suggested that Jesus could not have died because he is God. They even went to the extent saying that he was a ghost. And what they saw was a ghost, which I don't know how a, a Roman soldier would have put a nail into a ghost's hand and not mm -hmm. realize that there's no flesh and bones there. But the idea that Jesus dying on the cross has been offensive to a lot of people, including those who struggle with the aspect of the, what's referred to as a hypostatic union of Christ, 100% God and 100% man at the same time. But this verse attacks it. And to every Christian, we've got to believe and totally understand it is a foundation of our belief and salvation is not available apart from it, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so this attacks it. Now, in the Quran, it teaches that Jesus is the Messiah. Although Jesus is called the Messiah 11 times in nine different surahs, the Quran does not explain the meaning of this word. Now, thank goodness, hundreds of years before the Quran was written, the significance of the title of Messiah was made clear in the biblical scriptures, which the Quran confirms that were given by God. And that's the funny thing is that there are surahs that says that you must believe, you must believe in the Old Testament that God had given, that Allah had given. And the Old Testament clearly goes against the teachings of Islam, including the aspect right, of the, the exactly. worship of, 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 of Allah. And they say, 
the beneficent God has taken to himself a son. Certainly you have made an ab abominable assertion. The heavens may almost be rent thereafter, and the earth cleave asunder, and the mountains fall down in pieces. They that ascribe a son to the benefi beneficent God, and it is not worthy of the beneficent God that he should take to himself a son. There is no one in the heavens and the earth but will come to the beneficent God as a servant. Surah 19, 88 to 95. So in other words, again, they're, they're coming against the Christians who believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. These verses, by the way, these surahs uh, prove that there has been a belief in the Trinity even back then. All right. The five pillars of Islam. These are five things that are necessary for a person to be a Muslim. The first one is to bear witness that there is none worthy of worship save Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah or the prophet of Allah. And this must be done on a daily basis. Uh, the, they they have to state it, uh, to observe prayer of the Salat. Salat is, is uh, daily prayers, and, and they, they have their prayers, the prayer rugs. They have to face the east. And so wherever, whenever, whenever it's a prayer time, they have to find out where the east is and face the east. I thought it was Mecca. Huh? I thought it was Mecca. Well, that's, well, that's, that's toward that Mecca. Right, yeah. yeah. Mecca, yeah. Which, uh, what, they have to try to figure that out. They yeah. have to figure out where Mecca is at that point. They have to pay zakat. Zakat is the almsgiving uh, they give to the poor, and that's a necessary part of uh, being a, a Muslim. But don't they, when you speak of giving to the poor, it can only be a Muslim. They can't give anything to anybody that's oh, no, not a no. Muslim. Yeah, it would, to, to help the infidel would, would right. definitely be a uh, Yeah, that uh, would be a crime error. or yeah. sin. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. To perform a pilgrimage to the house of Allah, a hajj, and, and that is stated if, it, if, if possible, that is their goal to do that. And if you remember, was it last year there was a teacher that was suing the school board because they would not give her time off to do it. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary that it's done every year. It has to be, it's supposed to be done once in their life. And so it could have been done another time. And I don't know how that ended up. I think there was a lawsuit involved in that. And number five, to, reserve, to observe fasting during Ramadan, uh, the Bukhari. Now, the fasting that they do is, is to me, such a interesting way of saying it's a fast because it's not really a fast. A fast means that you give up eating or you can do a fast of uh, all food altogether, uh, but you should never fast for a great period of time without water. I just want to add that in case those, I've gone six days on a fast, but you never fast without water. Uh, but in their situation, the fast is not eating during daytime hours. That's not a fast, that's, that's okay, delaying yeah. supper. You know, and, and there's a lot of people that work jobs that, that they're quite busy. And I used to do it. I used to have a meal just at, at, at nighttime. I'd have one meal. And with them, during Ramadan, they do not eat during the daytime. And by the way, let me say this because uh, we had talked about this a couple of years ago about uh, churches that join in with the Ramadan. And that's an abomination. I don't think any Christian church should have anything to do with joining in on this feast. Absolutely and I don't not, think that no. there's anything that there's nothing gained by it. You may want to look as if you're you're Muslim friendly, and if that's your intention, let me tell you, I think you're Muslim friendly, but gospel unfriendly, or the the scripture unfriendly, and we should not have any work and any any association with such works. Did the Bible really prophesy the coming Muhammad? Muhammad said that the scripture itself prophesied of his coming. He talks about it in Deuteronomy, but also he said when Jesus made the comment that he will send another comforter, yes, he, was he said that, that Muhammad said, I am that comforter. Mm -hmm. And that's not what Jesus said very clearly. He was talking Holy about the Baptist Holy Spirit. And in Acts chapter 1, he says, and when you are endued on, uh, from on high, you shall receive power to be my witnesses, dunamis, be my, power to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Sudamaria, and to the remotest parts of the earth. He was not talking about Muhammad. Let's look at Deuteronomy. I will rise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth and he will tell them everything I command him. If anyone does not listen to my word that the prophet speaks in my name, I myself will, will call him into account. Deuteronomy 18, uh, 18 to 19. Now Muhammad said that this referred to himself. There, was har there were hardly any two prophets that were so much alike as Moses and Muhammad. Both were given a comprehensive law and code of life. Both encountered their enemies and 
were victorious in the miraculous ways. Both were accepted as prophets of statesmen. Both migrated following conspiracies to assassinate them. And this is from an Islamic website. In other words, he's saying since Deuteronomy was written by Moses, that Muhammad compared to Moses was of the same caliber of Moses, and he certainly was not. Not in what he said, nor what, how he lived his life. Why they feel this does not refer to Jesus? Well, analogies between Moses and Jesus overlook not only the above similarities, but other uh, crucial ones as well. These include the natural birth, the family tree, the death of Moses and Muhammad, but not of Jesus. Moreover, Jesus was regarded by his followers as a son of God and not exclusively as a prophet of God, as Moses and Muhammad were, and as Muslims believe Jesus was. So this prophecy refers to the prophet Muhammad and not to Jesus because Muhammad is more like Moses than Jesus. And, and that's ridiculous. Anytime you do a comparison, and we've done comparisons mm -hmm. before between Jesus and different uh, men in the scriptures. Uh, for example, if you look at Stephen, the death of, death of Stephen mm -hmm. and Jesus, they both, they both uh, there was a lot of similarities there. It doesn't mean that they have to be exactly the same. And, and the idea that, that because Jesus was, uh, did not have a natural birth, the family, the family life, the death of Moses, this has got nothing to do. This is referring to Jesus, that the words of Jesus be more powerful than the words of Moses himself. The quality of a prophet. Now I'm going to read this because right after this I'm going to compare, we're going to compare Jesus and, and, and Muhammad. The prophets never commit large sins or small sins that indicate meanness such as stealing a grape. And I've got to stop there. I mean, if stealing a grape is what's considered as, as a indicate as a sin uh, of uh, meanness. What about the times where Muhammad went in with his followers with the sword and killed every Jew in a village? Matter of fact, if we look at Freemasonry with the, 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 the hat that they would wear. That they, the fez. The fez. It's, that was, <clears throat> that's actually to remember a time when Moses, when Moses, when Muhammad attacked a village killed all of the Jews there, and all of the Muslims took their hats off and dipped it, it in, in the, the blood. blood. Yeah. And that's a, that's a symbol of the Shriners. That's the, the Shriners. That's Shriners. what I was trying to remember yes, what level yes. it was. They are truthful about everything they say about this life and the next, as well as about what happened in the past. The best human beings are the prophets. May Allah increase their honor. And the best prophet is our beloved prophet Muhammad. And this was actually... Uh, not from a Muslim website, but this was actually from uh, a website that people were, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you write comments in and somebody else comments about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody helped me. It wasn't yeah. Facebook, but it was something like that. But anyways, a blog. This is from a blog. Okay. And it's uh, from uh, Sheikh Abu Ad Adam al Naruj, Naruji. All right. But he said that, now I want to compare the life of Jesus to the life of Muhammad. The birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus were clearly prophesied in the Old Testament. But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall become forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. So with Jesus we see very clearly that there were so many aspects of Christ's life that had been prophesied including the death, the burial, the resurrection. And many of the prophecies, there's no way that Jesus could have affected in any way, shape, or form to try to manipulate. That's not the case with Muhammad. The coming of Muhammad was not predicted. It was not predicted in the Old Testament, including Deuteronomy that we just read. It was not predicted in the New Testament, or even in pagan or soothsayers or seers. Even in the demonic realm, there was no mention of a man that would come that would fulfill the requirements or the statement of, of Muhammad. Jesus was sinless. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Hebrews 4.15. Yet without sin is important. We've got to understand that that meant that Jesus was always without sin. A virgin birth meant that he was born without sin. He lived a perfect life through every temptation. He was victorious. And he did so by relying on the power of the Holy Spirit. Now with us, our victory comes through the cross. And they overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb. That's what Jesus did at Calvary. 
The word of the testimony, that's what Jesus has done in our life since we believed what He did at Calvary. And they love not their life unto the death, the ultimate goal of Calvary. That we get to a point that it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in Amen. me. Okay? So, we see that Jesus was without sin, and then, and, and I forgot to put the where it was in Mark. Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee. Who art thou? The Holy One of God. So, even the demon world recognized and made a statement of the holiness of God. Muhammad is just a man. He engaged in natural sins and lusts affect all, that affect all of mankind. That's very clear, especially when you see the amount of wives that he had, marrying a child, consummating that child when she was still a child. Uh, Quran does, not, does, does never state that, that Muhammad er, uh, was ever sinless. It never states that he was uh, uh, sinless. Uh, Allah commands Muhammad to repent. Now this is interesting. Surah 40, 55, Allah, the God of the Muslims, tells Muhammad that he has to repent. And then it reminds, reminded Allah, Allah reminded him of his sins. I apologize, I'm not reading right today. Now Jesus was born of a virgin. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah 7, 14. So very clear, he was born without sin, born of a virgin. Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Jesus. So miraculous birth of Jesus. Muhammad had an ordinary birth. Nothing miraculous or supernatural about his birth whatsoever. He was uh, the natural product of sexual union between his father and his mother, 100% natural birth. Jesus performed miracles, healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons, controlled the wind and the waves, turned water to wine, fed the multitudes. John 3, 2 says, For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with them. So the sign or the approval of a man as being a prophet was that God would be able to use him through the miraculous powers. Now let's look at Muhammad. Surah 17, 91, 95 states that Muhammad never performed a miracle in his life. Now, a lot of people questioned him about this, and, and, and this caused him problems. When asked by doubters to perform a miracle, he either stayed silent or said that he would not do so because he was a human being like any other with no function except to communicate, to be a bringer, bringer of good news and a warner. Later on, he said that the writing of the Quran was a miracle everybody demanded. He said that the revelation of, the, of angel Gabriel to him of the Quran was a miracle in itself. Where well, we see very clearly with Jesus, there were so many manifestations of God's power through miracles that the Bible says that if all of the books on the earth would record what he did, it would not be able to hold them all. Praise God. Yes. Jesus preached the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him. So we see that Jesus talked about God as being a God of love. Now let's look at Muhammad. Muhammad never preached the love of Allah. Never preached that Allah loved mankind. Neither Allah's love for man or man's love for Allah plays any significant role in the preaching of the Quran. It is a fair stretch to say that Islam is a religion of love. And I have heard that over the last four or five years. No, 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 Islam is not a, a religion of hate, it's a religion of love. That's a far stretch, because it's not what the Suros teach. Jesus was divine and human at the same time. It's called the hypostatic union of God, of Christ. We see the Son of Man. What shall do with thee, Jesus, the Son of God? Uh, sorry, Son of God, uh, Matthew 8, 29. Then we see the Son of Man. But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sin. Then he saith to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thine own house. Now with the Jews, they felt that nobody could do a miracle unless, uh, nobody could forgive sin unless they were God. And they also tied sickness a lot of times to sin. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus used this example to prove that he was the Son of God and Son of Man at the same time. Muhammad was 100% human. Jesus was the greatest speaker ever lived. Uh, even his enemies had to confess that no man ever spoke the way he did. Secular colleges study the Sermon on the Mount due to its literary beauty. Even today, there are, there are colleges you can go to. If you're an English major, you're going to be looking at the Sermon on the Mount. 
Muhammad's speeches were anything but outstanding. There was confused speak, lack of beauty, lack of substance. And um, even, even some of the Muslim uh, writers have made that comment, that, that uh, the, the strength is not in the beauty of the delivery, but in the truth that it speaks forth. Jesus was an example of high morality. He was without sin, overcame all temptation to the, the devil set before him. Muhammad is definitely not an example of high morality. He was involved in assassinations, involved in murder, involved in adultery, involved in child molestation, involved in incestuous relationships, marrying his, his daughter-in-law, involved in deception. Matter of fact, he said it was all right to deceive, to go into a, uh, uh, an arrangement, go into a covenant with an infidel, and then later to break that covenant. To go into that covenant for the purpose, or a peace treaty, for the purpose of becoming stronger and that you can come back and dominate. Jesus never used physical violence to force people to believe his message. It goes contrary to whatever God teaches mm -hmm. in his word, whosoever will. The aspect of man's will is involved in deciding to worship God. We believe that man is involved in man's choice to accept Jesus Christ. We don't believe in, in pre-selection. We believe that man can yield to the grace of God, to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Jesus would never want anybody forcibly to be brought to him and to be a servant. Everybody was, came there because of his will. Right. Whosoever will. The Bible clearly states that no man has a choice to, uh, that, that man has a choice to receive or reject. Everybody has a choice not to be a Christian. Everybody has a choice to decide their ultimate destination. We have that choice. And we but, can either receive him as our Savior exactly. and re or reject him. And we have that choice to receive him. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. Nobody, we're, we're not going to force anybody to be a Christian. You know, some parents try to force their kids, you're going to be a Christian. The reality is they may outwardly look like it, but they still have to make that decision for Christ themselves. Exactly, and usually it, it brings a lot of resentment. No, and the best thing to do is to show them why mm -hmm. Christ is the best way. And they've got to make the decision. Absolutely. Though. There has been some Christian, a particular Christian religion in the past that forced people to, be, to become Roman Catholics. They did the same thing. That's a good point. That's yes, a good it point. is, right. But again, uh, we make a distinction between Catholicism and true Absolutely. biblical Christianity. All right. Mohammed frequently used physical violence. He, he used force to get the people to give up their idols and accept Islam. Islam will convert the world through words, deeds, or through the sword. And that is their words. That is what they say. So Muhammad, a lot of times, would come into a village. If they would accept the teachings of Islam, no problem. If not, he would use the sword to force them to. And if not, a lot of times the village was, was just wiped out. It's still being done today. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Jesus never instructed his disciples to use force. Muhammad commands the use of force by his followers. He taught by example. He sent them out as assassins to kill and to rob and to subdue. The Quran allows Muslims today to lie, steal, and kill in his name. And so if you, and again, and I've read different portions of the Quran. It's not an easy read because it, it doesn't flow. Mm -hmm. But uh, these things are definitely found in it. Jesus never took another man's wife. He never took a wife for himself either. Muhammad took the wife of the adopted son, Zayid. He saw her without her veil and lusted after her. The practice was back then that the women always had to have their face veiled. And uh, the story goes that he knocked at the door and she answered the door without her veil on and he lusted for her. He had a convenient revelation from Allah which commanded Zayid to give up his wife to Muhammad. He also decreed that there is no evil in father-in-law taking his daughter-in-law away from his adopted son. That's unbelievable. Yeah, think about that. I mean, is this <laughs> yeah. not the same as Joseph Smith, yeah. who, who right. had such a problem with, with adultery that all of a sudden he gets his revelation? And in this revelation, God tells him that he's allowed to have multiple wives, that polygamy was away, and that his wife had to accept it. God commanded his wife to accept it. So here that's, we see... It's exactly the same spirit. Same spirit, absolutely. Religion. Because when you're creating your own religion, the sinful nature rules. And so what is, what is your lust, in, in whether it's power, whether it's riches, whether it's immorality, 
At that point of time, that's what you're going to promote in your religion. Now, this surah, by the way, the surahs that, that talk about him, uh, about the right to take away your, son, your adopted son's wife, has, has also caused a problem because now a lot of Muslims will not adopt. So a lot of children, the, the adoption is very, very little in these areas. All right. Well, that could, that could be too because they have rather large families. They do have large families. Well, they, right. they're allowed to have four wives if they can handle them properly. Jesus died for mankind. Romans 5, 8, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And, and let me stop for a second. Those that may be watching that you've never accepted Jesus Christ, I want you to know that God loved you so much that from the very beginning, before he created the whole world, it was already determined and it was stated as if it was already done. The Lamb of God was slain from the foundation of the world. Jesus had already determined that he would go to the cross for your sins. God doesn't wait until we get our act together. And a lot of times that's what happens. People try to become religious before they get into relationship. And we're going to have to break with that, John, uh, Mike. And we're going to be right back, ladies and gentlemen, after the break, continuing with our discussion. And we're also going to be uh, taking your calls. And if you have a question or comment, you can give your comment. But we're going to have to, because we're going to have, probably have a lot of calls. I've already gotten several emails that I want to read. Uh, but so keep your comments within um, uh, not real long, but say what you want to say. But basic, basically, if you have questions, something that we're not clear of, uh, clear on or where Mike is getting his information, please call us right now. The number is 1-800-342-8430. That's one 800 Three four two eight four three zero. The United Kingdom. It's zero eight hundred zero six eight eight one six two. And if you'd like to email us on air at jsm.org, we'll be right back after the break. Thanks to your monthly financial support, this program is made possible. We'll be right back with more Francis and Friends on the Sun Life Broadcasting Network. Francis and Friends is a production of the Sun Life Broadcasting Network. Email questions for today's program to onair at jsm.org. You can also visit our website at francisandfriends.com. Okay, before we go to our, for, our first caller, I have several emails, and they're short. So, Mike, I'm just going to read them. And then you can make a short comment sure, on them absolutely. because it's not necessary to even comment on all of them. But I'll read them yeah. because I want to give um, a fair view of Islam and its religion. It said, Francis, tell Mike he's wrong. He's reading from people's opinions about Islam. He does not go to the source. I read the sources. It's very clear. These are Islamic sources especially when you have blessed be his name or his name be praised right. after the Muhammad. Obviously, it's not a, uh, a Christian source. It is a Muslim source. Okay, Francis, the zakat, I guess that's how you pronounce it, is the tithing. Right. 10% uh, just like Christians that give tithes. It's right. the same thing. Okay, Francis, uh, Muhammad did not come 600 years after Jesus. You get it? Stop saying false things about the Quran. That's a, it's their website. That's a historical fact. Yeah, that's a historical fact. Yeah. That. When does he? When does this person think he came? <laughs> I don't know. Francis, the Quran says that Jesus is God in the flesh. You just don't understand it, so stop attacking it. Well, we were just giving. Hold uh, on a second. They said that he's God in the flesh. Uh huh. I don't know of any Muslim that would agree to that. Muhammad was not even God in the flesh. And Muhammad is the greatest of all of Allah's prophets. All right. No. Francis, you're very wrong. Allah is God in all religions. You understand what I'm saying? No, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't either. No. Um, Francis, you hate Muslims. That's why you slander their religion. You are very ignorant. Uh, Francis, Islam is a true religion. 
there are many ways ways to God, but we all worship the same God. No, we don't. No. Not at all. Not at all. And there are not, not many ways not to God. No. Uh, Francis, Islam is a religion of peace. Jesus was a Muslim. <laughs> as a parent, uh, as a parent of a special needs child, I would like to know how Islam deals deals with people that have mental and physical handicaps. Do you, you know? know? I don't know. I've never looked into that, but I will definitely research that and see. Okay. You know, it maybe some of you know. You can help us out there. All right, what translations of the Quran give the best translation? I want one that is word for word and pulls no punches. Actually, there are several ways of reading the Arabic of the Quran. There are, and I think that uh, John, John uh, Rosen, sir, I don't know if he's uh, watching right now or listening, he'd be in a better position to, to, to answer that. If not, I will ask him on that. But there are some uh, accepted... English translations, and there are some that, that may be in question. Um, I don't know why anybody would want a Quran, to be honest with you, unless you're a Muslim. It just, it, to me, this, I have one in my, in my classroom. Uh, I have it there. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tool of reference when I want it. Uh, but other than that, it's not easy to read. It is and not. It's, it's, I have one, too, back when we were doing a series like this years ago. I got it and I tried to read it, and it's very difficult to keep a train of thought in what you're exactly, reading. Exactly, exactly. It's, 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 there's no fluidity to it. Right. All right, let's go to Israel in Texas. Israel, welcome to Sun Life Broadcasting. <laughs> uh, you have a question, Israel? Yeah, I have uh, several questions for uh, Mike Motherall. Sure. One of the questions I wanted to ask uh, you just read uh, in one of your emails about uh -huh. Allah. It's not being. It's not the same God as the Christian God. That's right. going to be my first question. My second question is. Well, I uh, tell you what. Let's just deal with them yeah. one, okay. one at a time. Is that okay, Israel? Yes, ma'am. Okay, That's Mike. Fine. Yeah, Allah. Allah was a term that was used for God. It was actually prior to Muhammad's revelation, and and it was one of the gods that he worshipped at the Kaaba. It was a place where where they would his family had worshipped other gods prior to that. And Allah was the favorite of, of his tribe. And so it is, uh, Allah is, a, is, a, is the moon god. That's why you see the crescent moon. Uh, it's not the same as, as, as Jehovah, uh, Elohim, God, Adonai, uh, our God. The God of Muhammad, uh, for example, uh, does not show love, does not express love. The God of Christianity expresses love, says that he loves us. God is love, doesn't possess love, but is love. And that's nowhere found in the Quran in reference to Allah. So I don't know how anybody in any stretch of the imagination could feel that Allah is a term that could be used for the Christian God. It's wrong. Oh, okay, so basically it's associated with the moon and the crescent star. They, exactly. Okay. Okay, my second question is... Uh, I noticed that you was making comparisons to Jesus and Muhammad. Uh, mm -hmm. In particular, you talked right. about the Son of Man and the Son of God. Right. Now, I want to ask, as a Christian, don't are we considered both as well? Are we the sons of a man? And by accepting our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as the Savior, we are also the sons of of yeah. God too, right? The, the, the difference is the term Son of God was a term of deity. I can't use that. I am not deity. Now, we have a, a, a human nature, we have a sin nature, and we have a divine nature. When we accepted Jesus Christ, Peter talks about this, that, that, that the divine nature came within us. But that does not make us divine. We are far from being God. Uh, we're not even little Jesus. I wouldn't call ourselves little gods. I think that's an absolute slap in God's face, and I believe it's blasphemy. Uh, to me, I'm just glad that I'm a child of God, but I am not deity. Jesus Christ was deity and humanity at the same time, and we're not. The hypostatic union of Christ does not transfer to those who accept Christ. Okay. So, so calling ourselves the sons of God you are saying that we're expressing that we're God and well, not to be the sons of God. That's the way you interpret that. We're children of God. 
but we're and, not sons of God. That's right. I wouldn't mm-hmm. use that in that in the same sense as a title. I would use it as I am a son of God, but I'm not the son of God. We're uh, not deity. We're not deity, and that's 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 what you got to really watch mm-hmm. out is that we don't get that deity complex. Okay. You see, the devil wins two ways. Uh huh. He wins if we elevate ourselves to God's level, or if we bring God down to our level. And in society today, that's happening all the time. Yes. Okay. Okay, my next question is, I've noticed when it comes to Islamic, uh, uh, the, the Quran, there are different, uh, uh, different people who translate it, and in some cases, they're like more surahs in one version than they are in other versions. Uh, is it something like uh, having different, could, could be compared to like the different Bibles that we have in Christianity, like the Good News Bible, the... Uh, amplified Bible. Yeah. That, that, so, so there are different translations. So Islam is similar, not in the same beliefs, but it's similar in having different types of translations. Right. And it can be yeah. interpreted from many different ways based upon what book you're reading, right? It, it's, it's not, yeah, you have a point there. There are some different translations, and they have the same arguments between themselves as to which is the greatest of translation. Um, but in all of what we've set forth, you will find in every one of them. It's not, we're not picking one particular one. And again, these are sites, the quotes that I'm getting were taken from the Islamic sites. It's a, uh, but the thing, it's, for example, and, and you brought up a good point. Uh, we don't have 15 different copies of the Book of Mormon. There's one that's accepted. That's yeah, it. Right. Uh, when you look at the uh, New World Translation, the, the Bible for the Jehovah Witnesses, there's not two or three different translations of the Jehovah Witness Bible. There's one, and you accept, it, and that's all there is to it. Okay. But there is within Christianity. We've got one just came out right now that that uh, to me has highly offended, and one day we'll talk about that a little bit more on the air. Uh, we have translations, and you've got to be careful as to what you read as a translation. Okay. And this is my last question. I'm going to hang up the phone. Now, on, on one of your comparisons, you were saying that Muhammad uses deception and Jesus didn't. Absolutely. Well, could you kind of explain in Corinthians what Paul said it was okay to lie to bring the brethren in or to win Christ over? And I'm going to let you answer that. I'm going to hang up. And I what, thank what, you what, all what for your time. Before you leave, what verse in, in Corinthians are you talking about? Uh, I'll be lying if I told you, but I have read it, where, uh, where Paul said it's okay to lie to win one over. Uh, no, 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 no. Where do you say that? No, well, I tell you what. You'll we'll find him and call do. us back. I, I, I know it's in there. Yeah. This is what I'll do. I know Francis have an email, and, and by the end of the show, I will look it up for you because I have read it, but it's been a long time. Well, now, email Paul, us. Email Paul did us. talk about those who are preaching Christ for gain and things like that. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, like I said, I'll email her and if she, if she perhaps get it because I know you got a lot of calls. This is a big subject, but I thank you all for your time and responding to my answers. All right, Thanks, sir. Israel. Thank you so much. Uh, Pedro in Florida, welcome to Sun Life Broadcasting. Pedro, you have a question? Yes, how are you doing, brothers and sisters? Yeah. Uh, doing great, thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to congratulate for your program. I, I have learned a lot, and I see, you know, a lot of people, you know, send you these messages, you know, stop. But this is the truth. It's the truth. This is the truth yeah. about, you know, false religions, you know, and I and I thank uh, God for you guys. And, you know, you're supposing the truth about uh, these false religions and that are damaging, you know, people, you know, and I'm being, uh, you know, getting people in this false mentality, you know, that, uh, you, you know, you believe in the uh, God of moon and all these, you know, false teachings. But being uh, said that, I just want to make a, a comment about, um, you know, when uh, the brothers say about, you know, Christianity, not being violent uh, against, uh, you know, the Quran, I agree to that. But the problem is that men are evil in their nation. Men cannot see God on their own, except that the far draws him and he will resurrect him in the last day, in the resurrection day. So the notion is that man, in, in, in his own evil ways, as Romans 3 says, that no man can see God. Right. To look for God in their own way, it's just, you know, contrary to the Word of God. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, the, you, the only way to approach God is through godly principles and God, God, God's only method. You know, even, even Jesus said it when, uh, in John 10, uh, 22 to 27, when the Pharisees, you know, told him, you know, 
uh, you know, that uh, stopped tormenting him at them because, you know, and he said to them, uh, I told you, you do not believe the works that I do in my Father's name. They bear witness of me. Or right. you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. Right. And I say unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So when we have assurance, uh, brothers uh, and sisters, that, you know, God, you know, is, you know, is the author and finisher of our salvation. We should now, you know, uh, feel that, you know, our salvation depends on us and will be lost, you know, in our own strength. You get what I'm saying? I, I think I am. Uh, the aspect of our Christian walk has got to be on what Christ did at Calvary. The focus of our faith has to be on the completed work of Calvary. My victory is tied to that. My peace is tied to that. My joy is tied to that. And, and from that aspect, yes. But there's an aspect in which I have to resist sin. I have to uh, choose to turn my face to work. I've got to call upon God for help. It's, it's, there's, there's an aspect, and yes, our salvation is based on what Christ did. Our daily walk is also based on that. I can't have my own righteousness and I cannot obtain victory unless it's tied to Calvary. So I just want to make sure we're both on the same page there. The, the, I agree to all that, you know, the Bible says, you know, we, we must, you know, keep strong in the faith, we must walk, we must, you know, seek God, you know, so, you know, He could help us, you know, in our daily walk. But when, when Paul was dealing with, uh, uh, I forgot which book was it, you know, and they, yet they were glorifying their own strength, you know, and then he said, you know, I could glorify, you know, I'm Pharisees so of Pharisees according to the law, blameless. Right. I would glorify in Christ because what do we have that we have now received? So it, if we have salvation today, if we could see Christ as our own Savior, it's because the Lord changed our heart. He doesn't, he doesn't have to force it. He doesn't have to, you know, break the door and just, you know, come to me. You have to believe. You just have to change our evil heart that it cannot seek God in its own uh, state of evil. And then, you know, God, you know, changes our mind and it takes the veil out of our eyes and we yeah. seek Christ our Savior. Okay. But, 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 Brother Pedro, I just want to, I just want to ask you a question. Are you talking about pre-selection? Yeah, I'm talking about, I believe in the election of God, you know, that God predicting no, well, the foundation of the world. I believe, you know, totally in that, you know, and no. I believe that's what the Bible okay. says. No, not at all, because the Bible says, the Bible said, for whosoever will. Our will is involved in this. And the aspect that, and I know how Calvinists teach it, they teach that only those that have been pre-selected will God bring them to the point that they can accept. God has given everybody a measure of faith, and that measure of faith is enough to believe what the Holy Spirit reveals to them. Whether they choose to or not, or what they do with that measure of faith is up to them. But uh, I do not believe that the Scripture points to. I think there are too many examples that, that uh, where I don't believe in pre-selection. I believe what's preordained or what's predetermined is what will God do for those who accept Jesus Christ. The benefits are predetermined, right. not who is going to be part of that. Right. And thank you, Pedro, for calling. Before we go to Joanne, I want to read this email. It said, I'm a former Muslim. And I came to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior by watching your program. So thank you so much for preaching Jesus and Him crucified. Praise that God. That thrills Praise me. God. Hallelujah. Praise God Amen. is right. Yeah. Okay, let's go to Joanne in Maryland. Joanne, welcome <coughs> to Sun Life Broadcasting. Good morning, all. Good, Good morning. morning. How are you today? I'm great. Thank the Lord. I, I have a question and a comment, but I'm going to... I'm going to start with my comment because I want to get off the phone to listen to the okay. question that Mike answered. But a few years ago, and I live in the D.C. metro area, uh -huh. I saw in the paper where women had married uh, Muslim men. Uh -huh. And uh, I guess they didn't realize how strict the religion was. And these men wind up taking their children to these the uh, Muslim countries. That's right. right. Now the women are fighting to get their kids back. Right. But the law over the, in these countries doesn't agree that these kids should come back to America. Exactly. And I would like for Mike to check 
that out because I've, true. I've heard nothing. No, about you're no, that. she's absolutely right. Yeah. We've had we've had we've had uh, guests on the phones. I mean, guests in the past that have brought that point up, and that very clearly that if you marry a Muslim man, that yes. man his his goal is to get your family to become Islamic, and if necessary. Uh, he'll get anything and he like, and his family sure. have the rights to you, yes. the children. That's right. There was yeah. one incident where yeah. he said, "Let's go, Indeed. let's go visit the land." Yes. And when they visited, they never came back. The kids never came back. And the reason for that is, is they know in America they will get exposed to the gospel of Jesus Christ and have an opportunity to accept Him and leave Islam. That's that's, that's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you, Joanne, for calling. Let's go to our next caller, this Novella in New York. Novella, welcome to Sunlight Broadcasting. Good morning, Sister Francis, and to your panel of, uh, well, thank of pastors you. there. I thank God for your ministry, and I have been listening with great interest to your um, sharing about the various cults. And I, I just thank God for such um, a heart for souls that you are willing to share Amen. truth that are hard to accept by many people, but nonetheless are the truth of God that will set us free. And my question today to, my, um, to Mike is, uh, what is the source of this information? I'd like to um, be able to get a hold of that. The source of? The source of your information you're sharing today. Uh, well, we had in the bottom of all of the different screens, uh, they were specifically... Um, uh, quotes from Islamic websites, but okay. from the aspect of uh, the comparison, that just comes from years of reading things and, and comparing and sitting down and having the Holy Spirit say to me, okay, fine, Lord, what would you like me to write down um, as to comparing Jesus and Muhammad? And, and these are obvious things. Okay, I'm not currently on, um, on the, the, the computer. Okay, but, yeah. Um, eventually, I probably get mine go up and going again. <coughs> but I ask that because for What's several weeks now, I have book. a little pamphlet called Christian Muslim Dialogue, and it's, by, it's published in 1984. Well, we have, we have our, uh, this book here. Uh, my husband just wrote it. I believe it's last year, Islam and Christianity. It's excellent. Absolutely. Oh, I would really right. suggest it. But yeah, much of it's what, excellent. That's much right. Of what Mike has said is in this book, and I was very interested when um, you spoke about... Uh, Moses, that Moses supposedly prophesied of the coming of Muhammad, because there was a page in this book, a uh, comparison, comparison of the prophet like unto Moses, and it lists Moses, Muhammad, and Jesus. And the comparisons are that Moses was married and so was Muhammad, and it goes on and on. There are a lot of com- right. comparisons. It also, in the so-called dialogue between the Christian and the Muslim, the Christian brings up the fact that Jesus did miracles. And the writer of this pamphlet says, well, so did other people. And he began to point out Elijah and um, different other people that performed miracles. Right. So he had an answer for this Christian. I, I doubt whether this is truly a dialogue. I think it's just uh, uh, Islamic propaganda. Absolutely, absolutely. Because if this was a new Christian, he would have been able to defend the faith even better then, because I wrote my own apology, you know, in the, right directly in the book. Mm-hmm. Right. And what are, the other thing that I wanted to share, he discredits the Bible as being uh, distorted by man, and uh, they've taken out different things. Yeah, so, so did he, Jehovah Witnesses, so did the Mormons. Right. Yeah. I, I, I realize that. And then yeah. he has, he has uh, a comment here which refutes his contradiction, which, which refutes his argument, and he says... Although Jews and Muslims are arch enemies, no Muslim would dare to write a book and stamp any Israelite prophet like Judah, David, or Jesus, etc., with rape, adultery, incest, or prostitution. He lists a litany of things, such as Noah getting drunk, David um, uh, committing adultery. Right. And how would David... So all of these arguments that he lists or he speaks of in this dialogue, so-called dialogue, with the Christian. The bottom line is the Bible is not the Word of God, because if it were truly the Word of God, these things would not list, be listed. And I said, oh, my Lord, that's why the Bible is true. That's because the opposite, God absolutely. The flaws and everything. Yeah. He hides nothing. 
See, oh. the, the fall of David, for example, his, his sin, by the way, it always referred to as the sin of David with Bathsheba. It never puts the blame on her. And I think society has, has gotten the wrong picture of that whole thing. But it, it always refers to as the sin of That's David right. with Bathsheba. And she's always mentioned as Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. Now, it's there because it's there to teach us things. And the greatest lesson it teaches us is the fact that David, who knew that the law did not have a sacrifice that was, that was able to cover this sin. In Psalm 51, he talks about that that was not required, that sacrifice. Why? Because it was not available. And David calls on God for mercy. And so I want everybody to know that the, the Bible talks about the good, the bad, and the ugly. But most of all, it talks about God's dealing with man so that man can take us and change us into the image of Christ. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, Novella. <clears throat> Quickly, we're going to Mike in North Carolina. Mike, welcome to Sun Life Broadcasting. Good morning, my sister Frances. And How you Mark. doing? Doing good. And uh, Jim, uh, just want to come in and say um, that um, I'm enjoying the program and Sun Life Broadcasting. Keep up the good work. Thank good you. And my quick question, and uh, I've got a quick question uh, for you, um, Mike. Uh, I just want to... Uh, uh, understand is the Muslim faith an outbranch of Islam? It's a Muslim faith. It is. That's what it is. It is their faith. Right. Islam and uh, I'm, I'm missing something here. A branch of what again? Is the okay? Is Islam part of the branch of the Muslim? Well, a Muslim is a believer in Islam, is a right. follower of Islam. Right. It'd be like saying, is, is Christianity the same thing as a Christian faith? It's the same thing. It is their faith. Right. Now, you've got different branches within uh, Islam as you do with Christianity. Okay. okay. But I want to make one more <coughs> other comment. Quickly. Okay, very quickly. If we read in Galatians, because of because a person that's a friend of mine um, came back and came back across my Facebook page and says, "Really, Islam is not a religion? No, it's not a religion. It's an occult." Because <coughs> if, if we read in Galatians one eight and nine, you know, if we preach anything other than the cross, then it's right. Then let him be accursed. Right. That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, you know. Yeah. Uh, too many right. false. Yeah, you're right, Mike. I apologize. Uh, I got to cut All you. false doctrine, all false uh, ways of salvation means that they are cursed, according to what Paul right. was saying here. And we got to pause word. for a break, Mike. I apologize. I got to cut you off. But we'll be right back uh, with after the break, continuing with our call. Our next caller is Paul in Connecticut. To watch Francis and Friends live on Internet TV, log on to sunlifetv.com. Francis and Friends will be right back on the Sun Life Broadcasting Network. Francis and Friends is a production of the Sun Life Broadcasting Network. Email questions for today's program to onair at jsm.org. You can also visit our website at francisandfriends.com. Okay, we're back, and before we get, go into uh, our call with Paul from Connecticut, I want to mention Donnie's program that is debuting on Sun Life Broadcasting entitled Reflections, and uh, I want him to show you just a clip of it now and, and give the time that you can view it because it's going to be an excellent, we think, addition to Sun Life Broadcasting. You know, I never thought in all of my wildest dreams that I would ever have a program of my own. Of course, I never thought we'd ever have a network of our own. You know, reflections, it, 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 one of its synonyms is to observe, to look back upon, to think about. And that's really what we're doing. We're reflecting upon the ministry. We're reflecting upon the call of God upon my dad's life. How God called him to preach. How he got started the music, the, the crusades, how he got involved in radio, then television, and how that Sun Life Broadcasting Network eventually came to fruition.
Born. My dad was born in Faraday, March the 15th, 1935. And just for a moment, let's go to Faraday, Louisiana, and let me just give you just a little taste of what you're going to see. Oh, it's a wonderful, wonderful feat. And it's a wonderful, wonderful time. It's a wonderful feat. Ah, just to ease your mind. You know my heart is getting lighter. And oh, every day grows a little bit brighter. And let me tell you, my brother, that's how Jesus saved my soul. I think it's going to be a blessing uh, to you, so I want you to tune in and watch it. And we're going to go back to our, our program today, and we're going to Paul from Connecticut. Paul, welcome to Sun Life Broadcasting. Thank you, Sister Francis and the brother in there. God bless you all today. Thank you. God bless you. You have a quick question, Paul? Yeah, quick question. Clear. I'm just got to get rid of this call if you don't understand me clear. Okay. Uh, oh. Last night, I was watching a program about 2 o'clock in the morning, one of your programs about um, the Muslim girls who got saved at the uh, uh She was persecuted over there in Lebanon. I think uh -huh. her name was, uh, yeah, Brigitte Gabriel. Gabriel, that's it. Um, I commend you for that because, believe me, man, you really hit the nutshell with that program. Thank you. That interview, and I, I think she was, you should have her one day on, on your program like uh uh, yes, you know, I need, do need to get her back. Love That's right. Back, yeah. That was a powerful testimony. And the other question I want to ask you about this, um, this Horea law, that you were talking about it. Right. I think over there in Florida, if, I'm, if my mind doesn't uh, deceive me, I think I saw it in, uh, in uh, Fox News that they had this, um, they have a court there. A judge allowed Sharia court there in the same court. And why is the Christian not speaking out about it? And it has unconstitutional. If a judge is doing that, he should have been kicked out a long time ago. That's unconstitutional. We cannot have two courts in one court. If it's like that, then we should have one for the Puerto Ricans. We should have one for the Irish. We should have one for the uh, for the Buddhists. You know, that's unconstitutional. And I, I don't totally know agree. Yeah. yeah. Not that's, the, that's the unfairness. The laws it? of the land should be for everybody. Now, that's the problem right. is, is that their desire is that Sharia law would, would deal, let's say you go into a, six, a section of, 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 a, of a state that is highly Muslim, they say Sharia law should be here. We're going to get into a situation where, just like in, in, uh, uh, in Indian reservations, where when you come in, the laws are, it's governed by that territory or whatever. And I may be wrong. I may be speaking of Canada. I know in Canada that's the case. So we're going to get into a situation. It's going to have signs everywhere. You're entering in a Sharia law area. But the ultimate goal is for all America to, to be, be under Sharia law. And in some courts that are already, you know, <clears throat> using... Sharia law. And we're going to look at the actual laws. We're going to read some of the things that yeah. it will shock we'll, you. That's good. We'll get to that, right? Absolutely. So thank you, Paul. Let's go to Mary in Missouri. Welcome to Sun Life Broadcasting, Mary. Hello. Hi, can how you are you? Do you have a question? Uh, yes, I have a uh, question. I'd like to know, how did uh, Muhammad meet Allah? How did he get his revelation? <coughs> I heard it was in a cave. Yes. Yeah. It, it was, yeah. And matter of fact, he was so shaken up that he went back to Kadisha, his his wife, and, and he, he, he thought that he had met with a demon. He thought that he was under a demonic attack. And she was the encouragement. And, and uh, uh, Muslims and say very clearly, convince him to go back and get more revelation. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it's, it's how, how do you say it? There's no proof anywhere. Again, we're back into the situation with Joseph Smith and the tablets. The golden tablets are gone. There's no proof anywhere. It's, you know, even those who said they saw it later on said, well, we saw it in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, even in, like with Islam, even, there's really no history to back up that uh, Muhammad was outside of Arabic literature. No history that proves that Muhammad ever existed. And, and when Muhammad died, all of a sudden everybody's <coughs> running around trying to get every... They had stuff written on leaves. They had stuff written on everywhere to try to then accumulate to produce the Quran. Right. 
And so it's, it's really, you don't have anything factual right. to go back to and say, this really happened. In Christianity, you do. You know, first of all, you got the Bible, but then the historical... You have over 5,000 partial manuscripts That's of the original Greek that were written within 100 years of the, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the writing of the scriptures. We have more evidence. We have more evidence for Christ than we do for Caesar. Yeah, here's our book here. Uh, it, in fact, it's the United States, Israel, and Islam. And if you don't have this book, you need to read it. It'd be an excellent means of a source uh, for you to learn more about what we're saying. Uh, <coughs> and so, if you, I don't know the exact price of it, but if you'll just call our order line number and ask them to, that you want to order the book, uh, the United States, Israel and Islam. They'll be very, very glad to help you with it. And then I got an email here. It said that, uh, uh, that there are a lot of good books out about Islam. We've had a number of people on this program uh, to discuss Absolutely. this, but a really another good one is God's War on Terror. And that's by an ex-Muslim terrorist named Walid Shobat. And I've had this brother on the program. So if you really want to get into the history, I recommend our book, of course, first of all, because it gives you a little bit broader perspective of Islam, Israel, and the United States and how they kind of correlate together. Yeah, we've had, we've had Dr. Daniel Shiesti. I was a guest a couple of times. He came down he here. He did he a has great several, job. He has yes. several good books too. Yeah, no, very good. He was raised in Iran. Do yes. you remember the book? I, I believe this was when we're still on, still doing it just radio, Sister Swagger. And it was about a, a, a woman that had come out of Islam. Was it Princess or something? Yeah. Do you remember? I've read that. Because that was an excellent book too. Yeah. It's, I think there was about three of those books, I read all three of them. It was the first time that I really learned about it. But, but this lady had not gotten saved. She had just come to see the era. And she was one of the ruling uh, families. Her family was. That's right. That's right. Uh, in Saudi Arabia. And she saw the truth for exactly what it was. And I've got a number of books like that. So if you want to get some information, there's plenty of places. It said that I just want to let you know uh, that the teaching concerning Islam being the same as Christianity is being taught in some Bible colleges as well. A family friend came back from a certain Bible college oh, in Dallas, goodness. and he was saying that Muslims were our brothers, and we believe in the same God. That's oh, total my error. Goodness. That's not a Bible college. It may be a college, but it's not a Bible college. <laughs> it may call itself oh, a Bible that's college. that's it. That's yeah, it. Yeah, right. And, um, and the, then she said, there's a true story and a movie has been made about it, about uh, called entitled, Not Without My Daughter, about a woman that married a Muslim man and went to his country and they tried to keep her and her daughter there. Um, and that's exactly right. I read the book when it first came out. Um, it said, I, my sister married a Muslim. He was a perfect gentleman until they got back to his home country. I've read that so many oh, times. Yes, yes. When she got there, he forced her to wear the Muslim dress and stay in the house. Now, she eventually got up to go shopping under the supervision of his mother. And then she was forced to run away when she was out and had to go to the Irish embassy so that they could get her home. He was only interested in two things, having a son and getting a passport for himself. You just can't trust them at all because they think all Western women, uh, well, I won't say what she yeah. thinks they are, that's but they, they treat do. them that way. Okay, do. then that's, that's absolutely Absolutely true. Let's go to John from Georgia. John, welcome to Sun Life Broadcasting. Hello, John. Hello. How are you doing? You have a question? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I, I've been to uh, Egypt as a foreign exchange student. Uh huh. And I've been there for three years. Now, the comment about taking children to to the country. They won't come back. Okay, what? Yeah, they, they, they won't come back. Uh, there was a comment saying that when children are gone to the country, sometimes they don't come back 
That's well, right. The Boy, father won't let him come back. That's right. Yeah. And what's your, what's your question about that? No, no, about um, how certain um, families, right? Okay, the women, they get um, children. Right. Uh, men, the, the men, the Muslim men, they take their children to the country and they don't come back. Right. That's right. That's right. Okay, I got a question. I've been a foreign exchange student over there. Right. And my toll over there was just for one year. Right. But since I have progressed, because I went over there to learn Arabic. Okay. And when, I, when we learn Arabic, we just don't learn the language itself. We learn math, science, history, and all that stuff. Okay, and your question? Okay, the, the question is, if that was the case, and I've been around a Muslim family for three years. Right. I was never pushed into the religion. Right. Right. I was never pushed into religion. But I learned about the religion. But they allowed me. I was never allowed. I always prayed. No matter what. I prayed differently from everybody else. They never pushed on me their religion. I always asked about it. And I, and I heard... Well, where um, were you, John? As an, what place were you in as an exchange? In Egypt. In Egypt. Egypt is the most moderate, yes. modern right. of the... Of no, no. The, well, this part of Egypt is all Muslim. Oh, could be. Yeah. The, the but, the, but I know, but they were, like Mike said, they were not as strict. Now, now no, you couldn't do change. that. It's It'd be different change. now. Yeah. yeah. That's no, no, right. Well, back then when I was in, they was very strict. And so... Yeah, but you couldn't do that. But, but John, listen, what we were talking about is, is where an American woman marries a Muslim and go back to that country with children. You, you, your mother was not, from what I understand, was not married to a Muslim, so you don't have a, a Muslim father. So there was no reason for them to hold you or, or cause this. And this is what we were talking about, is where they will come to America, marry an American woman, have children, go back to that land, and then they won't let them come back to America. Now, that's not all in every situation because there are some. You've got to understand, for them to have Muslims here, obviously they need to stay here. Yeah. And so they're going to want families that look absolutely normal in every aspect mm -hmm. of life and, 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 and go through things to have people here so that when the time comes that they want to do something, they'll have people here. Again, I'm not saying every Muslim is like that. But we're also saying that there are many, 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 many examples, many emails we received, many calls from people who have lost their children by going over there. That's right, yeah. yeah. Thank you, John. And let's go to Dan in Georgia. I'm in California. Dan, welcome to Sun Life Broadcasting. Hello. Hi, how are you today? I'm fine. I uh, uh, am a retired pastor of almost 60 years. My father was a retired pastor, 85 years. And the gentleman mentioned on the program a few minutes ago that when he's talking about Muslims and that uh, Muhammad uh, couldn't have memorized all of the Quran. I'm I'm not for Muslims. I, I I appreciate your program so much, but he shouldn't use that statement because uh, I, doc, Dr. Uh, Thompson, who wrote the William Thompson Chain Reference right, Bible, right. Uh, he was blind, but he'd put the whole Bible to memory. He was a teacher of my father in Bible school years ago. But how did he do it, brother? He, he put the whole Bible to memory. But how did he do it? He'd have to have either some kind of a tape recording, Hello? And, and that wasn't available to Muhammad. You're talking about a man, that a Muhammad, who didn't even know how to read and write. And so... Well, I just want to say, we can't question the, somebody's memory or ability. I just think it's it's presuming on something. Yeah, but when you're not educated and you don't know, I mean, they, 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 he didn't write, he wasn't a writer. Like Mike said, you you got to be able to read something to memorize it. So well, I don't know, Dan, I'm... but anyway, you made your point and thank you for calling. And let's go to Monica in Georgia. Monica, welcome to Sun Life Broadcasting. Hello. Thank you so much, Ms. Francis, for taking my call. Thank you. You have a question, Monica? Yes, just a couple really quick ones for, uh, for Mike. Um, I have a friend, and he is bound up in Orthodox Judaism. Right. And I've known him for many, many years. I am a born-again Christian. I have been ministering to him, and he recently, uh, after I had stopped speaking with him, he recently told me that he went to a church, and I literally started running. I was so excited, thinking that maybe, you know, he was becoming open to that. 
And he went on further to tell me that it was some outreach group to get together Christians and Jews and Muslims. And now I'm kind of worried that maybe he's being deceived and they're, they're, before he can get a chance to exert his will to maybe accept our Lord Christ, that uh, he's getting into something he shouldn't. Right. And the other thing I was going to say is, you just mentioned about Sharia area, and it just brought to mind some Orthodox Jewish areas where there's a literal cord around the neighborhood when you come into some of those areas. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Sure, you're going to have, within, within the teachings of, of very strict uh, Orthodox Hasidic Jews, uh, the aspect of they don't want to be touched by a Gentile, uh, uh, they, they don't want to rub shoulders with a Gentile. In other words, some of the same teachings that were around in the time of Christ that the Pharisees had taught, uh, that if you even brush up with a Gentile, you had to go home and, and bathe right. and clean. Uh, so, yeah, there's going to be aspects of that. I don't think there's nothing wrong with having a, a restaurant that would be, let's say, uh, uh, halal or a restaurant that is that is kosher. I think from the aspect of uh, put a sign up and say that. But that's different than saying that if you come into this area and, woman, you are raped, then you have to have two right, men agree with you. Or telling the police you can't come in here. It's a lot of police won't even go into those areas. And that's one what, that's thing they're troubling. afraid. Yeah, one thing they're afraid. But then in other areas, they don't want, they want their rule of law. And that should not be allowed here in America. Would we have allowed a community in the United States, would we have allowed a community to say, this community, this, this town of 20,000 people, this is going to be a communist community. And all the laws are communist. Right. No, see that. We wouldn't have allowed that. No. Or uh, Nazism. We might now, though. Oh, I'm afraid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we right. might now, right? Okay, but, but can I can I say something sure. about when she's talking about bringing Christians, Jews, and Muslims together? There are many out there that preach an acceptable gospel to get people to accept the gospel, and when they accept the gospel, they haven't accepted the real gospel. They've accepted a counterfeit. The problem with that is when they get despondent with that, they will then close the door to any type of ministry from true Christians. That's the danger. There's a thing called Chrislam, which, uh, which is a mixture of Christianity and Islam. And they do half the service with singing songs to Jesus and half the service singing to Allah. And, and some scriptures of Christian and some from the Quran. And that's an abomination. That's not true. That's not true Christianity. So I'd be praying for him. I would, I would continue to minister to him the best you can. And thank you, Monica. We're going to Paula in California. Paula, welcome to Sun Life Broadcasting. Oh, thank you, hon. How are you today? Fine, thanks. You have a question, Paula? Well, um, it's kind of more of a concern. I was a first responder in 9-11 um, uh -huh. in the um, uh, information arena, shall we say. Okay. And... Um, I had learned things about the Muslims that probably a lot of other people don't know. And I have a really, really hard time with the Muslims, regardless if they say they're peaceful or not, because they're not peaceful. No, they're Even not. the ones that say they're peaceful, they're, no, they're, not. they're not. They are doing things to help the radicals, right. uh, because it's almost like they're commanded to. But I was wondering, if uh, the countries in the world are being taken over by the Muslims. Right. Just, just totally being taken over by right. the Muslims. And I was wondering if any of this relates to anything in Revelations. Well, I don't know if, if I would tie it that way. Um, but we do know from the aspect, and again, Brother Swaggart's book is, is highly recommended, mm -hmm. as to what is the role of the United States in the last days. I think the influx of, uh, of Islam, the 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 insurgents of the Sharia law that they're trying to insert all over the place, I think all of these things weaken our nation. And I think that those things are definitely playing into the end times. We don't see anything in Scripture that would, would be a clear example of United States in action. Uh, I had one person very upset and they said, no, it talks about the nation of eagles and rivers. Mm -hmm. And that's got to be United States. Well. United States is not the only country that uses an eagle as, as a state bird or a, as a representative of their symbol, nor is it the only nation that has a river. 
Uh, the Eagle was used by, by Germany, and they definitely have mm -hmm. a lot of beautiful rivers. Uh, but again, uh, there's nothing that's clear. So United States is losing its power. We see that very clearly. Yes, In the last four or five years, that's we've right. lost a lot of power. But uh, I, I don't know whether the, all these nations becoming Muslim is necessarily prophesied, but it definitely will come into play in the aspect of Israel seeking peace. That's exactly right. All right, Paula, thank you so much. One more quick email before we have to go, Mike. Said, Mike, you're speaking the absolute truth. Americans need to wake up and quit falling for this deception that Islam is a peaceful religion that the media seems to promote. And we should fear this religion, seek God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit for direction, wisdom, and understanding. And I want to add to that, we should witness to oh, these people. Because just like I read a few moments ago, they're getting saved. That Amen. is the positive thing about them coming to America. They are hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ Share and your, they're accepting amen. it. Share your testimony. One of the things I did when I was talking to a Muslim, I said this, I said, listen, Muhammad himself was not assured of heaven, but every Christian who believes the scripture and has accepted Jesus Christ already has that assurance in their heart. You see, there's no, with them, there's no assurance. That's, right. That's the difference between religion and relationship. Even with religion, you, you, you think that you've arrived and you go, no, I haven't arrived. I may have to go through purgatory. But with Christianity, you know that right now, if you die, you're going to be with Christ. Oh, that's right. It said, it's, uh, as a college stu student, I'm subjecting to these promotions uh, of the religion of Islam from multiple areas of study. That <clears throat> is the fact. That is true. Yes. It's sickening to me that they push this religion, but not Christianity. I know Gabriel wrote an article. He was given a task. He wrote an article that was concerning and it used the Bible right, as right. his source. Yeah. And the teacher just right in front of the whole class gave him an F without even judging the article. The content, but, right. right. So yeah. it's, you know, that you're exactly right on that. It said uh, to those that say Allah is the same as the God of Christianity, does Allah have a son named Jesus Christ? who died on a cross. No, they don't teach that. There you go. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Well, I want to thank all of you for being with us. Now, Mike, you're going to be back with us on Tuesday. On Tuesday. We're going to continue with this. And we'll be studying. We're going to, we're going to continue a little bit more on the, the, the controversial side of Muhammad's life, also going into Sharia law and, and looking a little bit more at the uh, five pillars of Islam. But, but And also, I want to touch base whether it's next Tuesday or next Thursday, also on uh, women in Islam. That's good. That's excellent. Thank you for being with us. We love you and God bless you. We'll be back with you tomorrow. John Rosenstern's my special guest tomorrow. We have a lot of things that we're going to be discuss discussing. We love you. God bless you. Thanks for joining us today for Francis and Friends. Email questions and comments for today's program to onair at jsm.org. Podcasts of previous programs can be listened to on our website at francisandfriends.com. Francis and Friends airs live weekday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central, and replays weekday evenings on the Sun Life Radio Network and on television on the Sun Life Broadcasting Network. Francis and Friends is a production of the Sun Life Broadcasting Network.